Hi there, I'm in my Orioles attire. So I've gone to a couple of games since you last saw me. I've been to an Orioles game against the Angels and then another Oriole game against the Angels. The team had lost 19 in a row until I came around and they won. And then they won again. So that was last week or a week and a half ago, since you're watching this tape. Got my Orioles cup right over there. The Trey Mancini on it and the big bird, the Oriole bird here. So got my complimentary shirt they gave out uh, at the ballpark this summer. So I'm feeling good about baseball, but I'm here to talk about St. Joseph to you. And the first thing I think St. Joseph pointed out to you on this day, September 8th, on the calendar for your watching this, is you better remember this is Mary's birthday. <laughs> you better remember. Yes, Joseph certainly remembers. The official birth of Mary, September 8th. Isn't that great? And Our Lady is celebrated with uh, masses, especially We have masses today. We had a mass to Our Lady. And we had special readings that are given on this day. You have a number of choices. Uh, the Romans reading is interesting because it talks about God predestining and preparing for our salvation. So therefore, he could pick out people to come and serve him like Joseph and Mary. Okay, uh, You can read the genealogy of Joseph on a day like today. Uh, because as you go far back into the genealogy of Joseph, you cross over into Mary's once you get to Zerubbabel. And you realize that there is a plan that's been unfolding through the ages, through the generations, as Matthew likes to say. And it's coming in three stages, Abraham to David, David to the exile, exile to the time Messiah is born in Jesus Christ. And it mentions Mary and Joseph and a lineage, mostly Joseph lineage, but there's also a Marian lineage. And when we think of the birth of Mary, it was all planned out all the way back. Go back to Abraham if you'd like. Go back to Aaron the priest, Mary's long ago ancestor. And think of the priestly family that Mary is a part of, and she's part of the temple and the service of the temple, and she's something special. And, and just think then her relationship intertwines with Joseph, which is also a plan. So today in the, in the liturgy in the church, it speaks of Romans 8 and a plan that all things work together for the good. And even through history, God works out a plan. He worked out a lineage of Mary and Joseph. And then, uh, you know, that that uh, genealogy of Joseph out of Matthew, when you pick that as the reading to do at Mass, it takes a while to read. Well, in the birth of Mary, we're thinking of Jesus and his great lineage and just how he came from some, almost obscurity, but he is also born as a one who's pre-existed. Uh, it comes into the world and purposely put in the time of Joseph and Mary. Born of Mary, she is betrothed to Joseph, born into that situation. And, uh, and then the amazing thing that happens is they raise him. And at first, it just seems like another child in Israel, just a very holy, special child, but just enough, just one person. But then, uh, In his life, he changes everything in the world. And Joseph and Mary were, were aware of the extraordinary life of their child, but also waiting for the revelation and the action to come. And they were patient, waiting for it. I compare it to the story of this baseball player today. You know, I saw a baseball player named Shoei Otani, and he plays for Jap. Uh, The, the LA Angels, he comes from Japan. A lot of J fans from Japan or Japanese uh, descent were in the stands today watching him play and he had a home run in today's game. 
He's a quite outstanding player, the star of the All-Star Game this year, uh, getting a lot of attention. But he's just a, a young man that grew up um, in Japan. Um, his father did play baseball. His mom played some sports. Um, but they did they know it would be one of the most outstanding, once-in-a-lifetime kind of baseball players to come along. And, uh, and yet... The, he's playing now in the major leagues and he's called a once in a lifetime kind of a talent who can pitch and also play the field and bat with uh, all-star status in all three categories and he can he's fast too so there it was in Baltimore watching it and just uh, not so far away from Babe Ruth's birthplace you know and Babe Ruth is the one he's compared to the other once in a lifetime talent and Babe Ruth grew up, you know, kind of a bartender's son in Baltimore, and he got taken care of by the Zaverian brothers in a Catholic school, uh, the many Zaverian brothers in Catholic schools in Baltimore, and, and George Herman, later called the Babe Ruth, grew up, and when he was a teenager, it was he could see that he could play the game with extraordinary talent, and he ended up taking over baseball and became one of the great stars in the 20s and the 30s and the teens, 100 years ago. Um, big, big name in baseball. And now there's this other player who's kind of compared to him. Uh, the father of Babe Ruth never really thought any of this was going to happen to his son, and Shoei's parents probably didn't either. So I segue back to Mary now. It's her birthday. And Joseph, we think of him on this year of Joseph. And so unlike Babe Ruth and Shohei Otani, who get born and it's a surprise, they're superstar baseball players in America. That nobody really saw coming. They all of a sudden they just got born and the Lord let there be Babe Ruth. The Lord let there be Shoei Atani. And the guys hit home runs and they pitch great. And everybody goes, wow. But in Jesus' life, he was predicted to come. Unlike the baseball players, it just kind of, oh, who are these guys? But with Jesus, the Messiah was predicted. Hundreds of prophecies and some very specific ones, you could say like 25 specific ones, that somebody is coming, God in the flesh. And this guy is called uh, the Messiah. Okay, the Messiah. The Messiah is the Christ, the anointed one. So Jesus is coming and there's a purpose to his coming. There's been a purpose for his coming for the ages. The Messiah was someone that King David knew about. There's this deliverer figure all the way back to Moses. So who, who's going to deliver us to God? How's, how are we going to get back to God? You look at the prophets and all that they speak about in the Hosea or Jeremiah, you know, there and in his lamentations, they're saying, how are you ever going to get back to God after all the sins we've committed? God must be angry with us. And, and yet, um, are we still, are we still in his eye? Are we still, is he still interested in saving us? And this idea of Messiah is the, is the big answer saying, yes, he is. Now I was going to read to you Jesus proclaiming his identity in Isaiah, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he's sent me to proclaim good tidings. Uh, but I think you know that. And I think you know that in many places in Isaiah, it talks of a Redeemer coming, a figure coming. It also specifically describes even Jesus coming as suffering servant in Isaiah. And also 
Even the crucifixion scene, really, is in Isaiah 53. And so we, we have this figure that is coming for the Jews. In Ezekiel, he will sprinkle clean water upon us and give us his spirit. It's all about this word coming, this word made flesh, this figure, this Christ, the anointed one, the God-man. This is Jesus. And Joseph and Mary know who they have in their house. They know who has come into their world. So they're just loving him and raising him for the moment of ministry. So what am I getting at? And yes, I have changed into my night shirt. I'm ready to retire. Uh, I, I'm getting at the fact that Mary knows she's the mother of the Messiah. And what a big deal that is. Joseph knows that the Messiah is the one who's in his house that he's raising. Okay? They know that this is a special child. Different abilities than any other child in the world. I don't think it's like raising, though, a star athlete, you know, or even raising a progeny. I think there's something quite unique about Jesus. And yet, they have to raise him as normal as they can. And yet, they're a very holy family, a hardworking family, a humble family. And Joseph is right in the midst, just leading the way. And things are going to take their time before before Jesus is really revealed out to the world. And Joseph is good with that. He is. Yes, they're the parents of the most long-expected person, the most awaited person, the Messiah. They were waiting the Messiah. The dream of dreams, the hope for the Lord's anointed to come. Joseph and Mary know who's in their family. And they're blessed from the very start. Mary says, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, rejoices in God my Savior that he would choose this lowly servant. And all ages to come shall call me blessed because I am mother to, to Messiah. It was the amazing thing. And then Joseph realized that he is placed as the father on the earthly side to the Messiah who comes in mystery. Now, it's all amazing. Very different than giving birth to some famous person on earth. Giving birth to the long awaited Messiah realizes you know that you've been chosen. You've been chosen in history to be the ones to welcome him to the earth. This is Father Barry.